built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 9 of the Gauge 1 GWR Prairie Tank Scratch Build. Uh, you may remember the previous episode we finished the cylinders and we've got those in a reasonable shape and the next thing to think about is now positioning the cylinders on the frames. So we're looking now at positioning these on the frames like so. Um, in order to do that obviously one of the things I'm going to have to do is strip all the frame down again because I'm going to drill uh, mounting holes obviously for this for the cylinder to go in but equally I need to drill the mounting holes together so these two frames need to be as close together when I drill the mounting holes. Um, what occurred to me from one of the the previous one of the earlier episodes is I showed all this assembled but probably maybe didn't show as much detail at the time. There's the the conrod and in there is a little brass bush and if you look that side you can see this the the amount it stands off from the other conrod and the little the little screw I made. Now you can see this, it's got two little nicks in there where I catch it with a little pair of uh, a cutter edge just to close it too. So that's the, the conrod that goes to the piston and you can see hopefully if I get this the right way you can see the little stub that is in the wheel that the, con that the first conrod was fitted on and that the next one slides onto. So what we shall do now is start to remove these other, other little screws. These little screws are just something I knocked up myself. Let's take the other one off. And now this conrod just everything's quite a nice fit at the moment. So we'll just gently ease this off. Because it's such a nice fit, we've got to any discrepancies, it's quite tight there, so that's it, it's off there now. So got the main connecting rod come off. And again, as mentioned, you can see these stubs there now that are fixed onto the onto the driving wheels. The next thing is to remove the driving wheels themselves and this is where this locking, locking mechanism comes in useful. As I mentioned earlier on in one of the other episodes is one of the other approaches with driving wheels is if they, they, they're a force fit onto the axle and you've also got the option of locking them with some locking glue and that works fine if they're going to stay on all the time um, seems if it's a, a pre if it's a commercial kit where the parts are already made and all you're doing is just assembling the whole thing from a whole bunch of pieces that's all right because you only put the wheels together once and really they will probably never come apart again but because this is being built as a one-off these will have to come on and off several times to go through each stage because now each stage is built on the next. Now I've got the pistons made I now have a rough idea, or I've got a, a proper idea of where these pistons are going to be mounted now. So you can see now, that one is a very good fit, that these wheels as I mentioned before will be coming off several times 
during the course of this build. So this is where it's useful as far as I'm concerned so you have this locking mechanism you can see that as I mentioned in one of the earlier episodes the axle with a little pin through there just to lock it on this thread and this works really well once the wheels have been removed from one side I can now just ease these out and I can leave these just assembled and it keeps all the bits together less chance of losing any bits and pieces and uh, the next thing now is to take out the buffer beams and this spacer rod. The other thing I didn't mention at the start of the very, the very first video was when you're getting the space for the actual frames. I just made two of these, just these simple blocks and these are the exact dimensions of the main frames and these, this spacing seems to be pretty standard throughout the gauge one models I've built. So initially these just go in here just to make sure that I've got this spacing correct. The other thing that I do at this stage I just now I'm actually marking these up just with a simple engraving just so I know the orientation of things of how they go back as if there's the old Murphy's Law, so there's two ways of putting it together. If there's two ways of putting things together, you'll be guaranteed to put it together the wrong way. Uh, I've got the holes marked out. I've uh, just drilled two of them. Uh, I'm just going to carry on and drill the other two. the four holes drilled on the frames. Now it's a case of fixing the other frame behind this, essentially clamping them together like that and spotting through the same hole positions. These are going to be 8BA. Uh, these are just um, tapping size holes at the moment but Ultimately on the cylinder they're going to be tapped 8BA. Now set up with a, a parallel on the drill on the um, drill table to hold it. All I'm going to do now is just a spot through just to get the markings for these holes to drill through on. To do just to put these spot marks on. I'm going to do now just take this, separate all this, and just drill the final bit with them all separated. There. So that's the other holes transferred through onto the other side now. I've determined, looking at the pistons, that the holes we drilled on the frame, this is an inch, those, that spacing on the, on the frame, and the distance of this, the width of this, gives us an inset of 3 sixteenths. So I've drawn a vertical line here, 3 sixteenths. Now this is going to represent the running board and the cylinder has to sit underneath that. So it's going to be place the cylinder on top of the running board and with the four holes I've drilled we can now line up and I can see those 
lines going exactly through the centre of those holes that I've drilled. So what I need to do now is just clamp that into position. Well, here's our cylinder block now firmly locked into position ready to drill these just spot through with these four holes. Alright here's the cylinders now mounted on the frames. Done both of them now. So that's a that's a nice job done. That's good. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at as I mentioned before these aren't really cut to length yet they're a little bit oversized because I wasn't really sure exactly where this was going to work out. Yes it said on the drawings where they had to be but uh, sometimes you've got to take drawings with a little pinch of salt sometimes and actually physically check it yourself. Um, but this is where they are so these are probably still a little bit long as I've just said. Um, I'm going to make the cross head next for this to go in these slides. So that's a little um, milling job. Here's the cross heads finish now and they've not come out too bad. They're okay. Um, so what I'll just finish off by is just showing you a series of pictures just how we got to this stage. Right, there's the crossheads in position on the slides on there. So, as I mentioned in earlier episodes, I've made these over length. Um, so now the next job and the next episode is to fit this on here and get these down to their proper lengths.